morning fellow mathematicians welcome back to another video i'm doing the forbidden today i'm going to use the chalk pen <laughs> we are going to work with the d a bit more we are going to play around with it a bit more because i know from the comments that you boys and girls out there really love that is d <laughs> you have to use the d otherwise it's going to get rusty okay it's a lot of fun playing around with the differential operator but before we get into the main video i would like to thank skillshare for sponsoring this very video right here skillshare is an online learning community with a nice and easy concept you get yourself a premium membership, you sign up on their website and in exchange you are going to get unlimited access to over 25,000 courses. And it really doesn't matter if you want to learn something about mathematics, editing videos in Adobe Premiere Pro or how to carve wood. They really have you covered with everything and they really want to spark your curiosity each and every day. What I enjoy the most are the workshops about editing videos, which are being produced by professionals on this website. So the majority of those courses are actually being produced by people who are doing the stuff on a daily basis. And they really know what they are talking about. And the best thing is, most of them categorize their workshops into different difficulties. So even if you are a beginner, you can get yourself the beginner's class and Skillshare has you covered on this one. So if this feels like it's something for you, make sure to, to check out the link at the top of the description. There you can get two months of free premium membership trial and you can try out Skillshare on your own. So support the channel this way, try out Skillshare and now for the main video. We are going to do something really special today. We are going to do something that's kind of a forbidden thing, but it works out, okay? We are going to find particular solutions for differential equations. And in the end, I'm going to give you some small insight why it doesn't work for all cases and stuff like this. I'm not 100% certain either uh, why it doesn't work for certain cases, but I can try to give you an, a certain explanation, okay? So we are going to have this right here and we are going to uh, write it as the D notation once again, okay? So this right here is nothing but, uh, this, this is so weird, but maybe I'm going to write a bit more clear using this pen right here. Okay, this is nothing but um, D plus one times Y being equal to T. Well, this is our differential equation. And now we are going to do the absolutely obvious. We are going to deri d divide by D plus one, okay? On both sides, it's not equal to zero. <laughs> Maybe, we don't know, it's, it's not even bijective, okay? So uh, this is one of the problems right here why we can't really invert it in the normal case because if you have d of 3 being equal to d of 2, well, that's a true statement because they are both going to result in 0 being equal to 0. Well, that's okay, but this does definitely not imply that 3 is equal to 2. So this thing is not injective. So this differential operator is thus not bijective and in normal case we couldn't invert it okay we would get convergence problems stuff like this but never mind we are going to do it and we're going to see what we get so we are going to be left with y our solution to differential equation is going to be one over d plus one times t don't forget to put the t to the side because we have to differentiate something and now here's the really obvious thing i'm going to rewrite this as one minus the negative d. Why does this help? Well, this is our good old boy, the geometric series. Okay, that's a good old infinity boy. So k being greater or equal to zero. And thus we have negative d to the kth power times t. Well, we can write all of this out, okay? We are going to be left with y being equal to, okay, first iteration leaves us with one. Next one is the negative d. And then we are going to have higher and higher terms, but they do not matter. Do you see why they do not matter? I'm going to tell you in a second. I'm going to denote this at plus O of D squared, okay, times T. Now, we can multiply the T into here. We can distribute it. Distributive laws hold in the real and complex numbers and all the other numbers too. So we are going to have T minus DT plus O D squared of t. And now you can probably see why this right here doesn't really matter, why I've written it that way. If you differentiate t twice or more, it's going to result in zero. So all of this is zero. This right here is nothing but dt is one, resulting in t minus one. Like I said in the beginning, 
this is going to result in a particular solution. This thing right here is a particular solution to our differential equation. If we differentiate it, we are going to get 1. So we are going to have 1 plus t minus 1 is thus nothing but t. It is a solution to our differential equation. It does work out. But I'll tell you something. What happens if we have the sign of t right here instead of t? Well, it's not going to work out anymore be because <laughs> it really doesn't converge to anything. You are going to have the um, sign minus the cosine, minus the sine, plus the cosine, blah, blah, blah. Everything's going to go to zero. Maybe, we don't know, convergence problems. Like I said, this thing is not really invertible. It's something that really doesn't work in a normal case. But for simple polynomials, for stuff that you don't have to apply a, a limit to, it, it does work out. So, so the thing with transcendental functions maybe is the point that, well, they are defined using limits. It's, it's a formal Taylor series expansion, meaning we have the problem that we are going to take the limit of a limit and maybe this has to do with convergence problems. That doesn't work to interchange limits, for example. So this is a point where it doesn't work, but if you deal with finite polynomials on this side, well, go, go ahead and do it. it. It does work out. It really doesn't work out. It, it really does work wonders. And if we take a look at less differential equation that we actually dealt with, okay, Maybe you guys remember we were dealing with um, d minus 2, d plus 1, y being equal to t. And well, what we can do, we can divide both sides by this right here. Okay, just by the same arguments. Okay, maybe not equal to 0, we don't know. y is thus nothing but um, 1 over d minus 2, d plus 1 times t. And now you can do partial fractions. You can find the outtake maybe on my other channel. I'm just going to speed it up. Okay, we are going to do partial fractions real quick. And well, after doing partial fraction decomposition, we can actually go ahead and get started with this chunk right here. Meaning if we plug everything in, y is just nothing but. We have this uh, factor of one third on all parts. So we are going to have one third times one over d minus two minus one over d plus 1 times t. And now we can turn this into the formal uh, Taylor series expansion, kind of. We have to turn this around a bit. We can factor out uh, negative 2 on both parts, leaving us with a negative 1 half times 1 over, this is the only part where it gets hard, I would say. So if we factor out the negative 2, we are going to get 1 minus d over 2. Okay, let's say this is in the radius of convergence. We are just going to go ahead and rip this apart, leaving us with y being equal to 1 third. And then we are going to have a negative sign on both parts. I'm going to bring it to the outside. Okay, this is something we can do. And then 1 half k greater or equal to 0 of, okay, this is going to give us d over 2 to the kth power and then also plus formal Taylor series k being greater or equal to zero. That's an ugly looking sigma right here. I'm terribly sorry. And then once again, negative t to the kth power t. And now we can just go through the whole process again, just like we did down here. That's thus equivalent to, I'm going to put implications right here, y being equal to negative one third. And then um, I'm going to write it out. This is going to give us one half and then d. No, the first part is a 1 and then plus d over 2 and all the other stuff is going to vanish. Okay, we are going to multiply it by t. This is all a bit improvised. I'm terribly sorry I haven't done this on this one before. Okay, um, yeah, this is the first part. Okay, we are going to talk about this in a second and then negative one third and all that's really left is once again the solution to the thing that we had down here, right? This is just um, t minus one third plus one third then yeah plus one third okay what are we going to get right here those are, this is negative one six and then t over six negative t over six and then plus okay this is going to provide us with just one half meaning this is uh, one twelve negative one twelve at that and then minus t over three and then plus one third. I hope this is going to work out. One third is nothing but four over 12, leaving us with, okay, this thing right here is two t over six. So this is negative um, 
3t over 6. I'm going to shorten those expressions in a second. And here we are going to get plus 3 over 12. Leaving us overall with um, 4, um, no, one, 1 quarter. I'm terribly sorry. And then with a negative t over 2, right? Yeah. And this is exactly our particular solution. There was quite some work, okay? It's, it, it wasn't too easy doing this right here. If you're good at partial fractions, you can probably see it Im immediately, what you need as a factor right here, and then you can decompose it. But yeah, this thing right here is once again our particular solution. And probably the reason why this um, invertation, this inversion, probably the reason why you can't probably inverted is because it's not bijective. Okay, this is probably the reason why you are going to run into trouble right here. But but if you are dealing with simple polynomials, go ahead and do this. That's an absolutely cool trick. And then next time we are going to deal with another version of this thing right here, okay? Turning our D operator into formal power series is actually a thing that you find a lot in quantum field theory, in diffraction theory, for example, when you deal with Hamiltonians and stuff like this, because you have to invert the Hamiltonian sometimes, and this is where the cool stuff comes in. But this is for another video. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel. If you like, if you want to support channel a bit more by those teachers I created, I don't want to use this anymore. I'm going to put this aside. And yeah, I thank you guys for watching. Please share this video everywhere. Click the bell button, and up until the next video, have a flammable day. Ciao. <laughs> Akkurat, lernen Sie uns, wie Sie so berühmt geworden sind. Was ist das für eins YouTube-Star?